Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a pot holder. So let's take a look at this pot holder. Now I call this pinch me pot holder because this is how it works. You just stick your hands in through here like this and pinch and grab whatever pot you want. You can make two of these so you can grab both sides of the pot. Okay, and I've got two different fabrics that I'm using in this pot holder. Up here, the checkered fabric is my A fabric. And then underneath here and on the back, as well as the binding, is out of the B fabric. Now, you can make all of this any color. You can use all the same colors or you could make the binding a different color, the back a different color. Use up old scraps that you might have. So let's go over a few things that you need to do. So you want to cut your binding for the outer edge of the pot holder on the bias. All right. And the reason you want to cut it on the bias is, let me open this up here, is that because it stretches and it'll go around that curved edge of the pot holder easier than if you cut your binding on the straight grain. Now, if you're not sure how to cut your binding on the bias, there's a link appearing right about now in the upper right hand corner called Bias Cut Binding and it'll go through great detail on how to cut out your binding. Now, for this particular project, make sure you cut it out two and three quarter inches wide and 30 inches long, that should be more than enough to complete this project. Now, when you are cutting out your binding, pay attention to that part in the video that talks about cutting your edges here like this. So you want to make sure both are going in the same direction, either this way or this way, okay? Don't have them going in opposite directions of each other because you need it cut like that so that when you bring your two binding ends together they will match up. So you'll probably need to cut out two pieces and this is what it'll look like when you stitch those binding ends together. So watch that video and it will explain all this into great detail. Then press this seam open here so that it lays nice and flat then fold the entire binding strip in half and press the full length of the strip. Okay, set that piece of binding aside. Then you're going to cut out two more little pieces of binding and these are cut on the straight grain so it doesn't stretch because it's going to go on that top piece there on the uh, raw edges. So cut it only two and a quarter inches wide by about eight inches long, okay? And you'll take those two strips, you need two of them, again, fold them in half and press. And go ahead and set those two pieces aside. Now you've got your binding all ready. Now let's go over what you need for the rest of it. Now depending on the fabrics you're using, you'll need to cut fabric circles for your A fabric, two of them. And then your B fabric, you'll need two. Now if you're going to use all one fabric for all of it, then of course cut out four circles. Your batting, you need to cut out two circles. Now you could use one layer of batting and one layer of insole bright which is available at some fabric stores or you can purchase it online. Now for my pot holders, I don't always use the Insel Bright. I just used two layers of cotton batting. So let me go over how to get your circles cut out. Now you want to take your fabric and fold it in half. Bring wrong sides together, okay? and place a couple of pins somewhere in the center of where you're going to cut. Now, as far as a circle template, I have this old plastic bowl that I use for my circle pot holders. This one 
is seven and a half inches in diameter, going from one side to the other, seven and a half inches. So most pot holders are anywhere between seven and eight inches wide. So look for something round in your kitchen. I'm sure you do. Use that. You don't need to go buy a special template, okay? So place it down on top of your fabric. Remember, you're cutting two of them out at the same time. The pins are there so it holds the fabric together while you're cutting. So take a pencil or fabric marker and draw around your template. Then with a pair of scissors, go ahead and cut it out. Now, if you're real good with your rotary cutter, you could cut your circles out slowly with your rotary cutter, okay? If you're not comfortable doing that, using scissors is fine. So remember, you're cutting two out of each fabric, two circles, and then of course two circles out of the cotton batting. All right, so now you wanna take your fabric A circle. So Mr. Cameraman, we're gonna be over here now. And I still got them wrong sides together, right here. You're gonna cut them in half. So mine are seven and a half inches across. I wanna find the center, so divide it in two. That comes out to three and three quarter inches. So you're gonna take your ruler and place it on the side over here. This is my zero line, and then I've got it down here on the other zero line on your cutting mat. Place the three and three quarter inch mark right here, right on that zero line, and this helps you to keep it straight. Then line it up after you've got it all straight, and then cut your two circles in half. Okay, now, one more little cutting step. Take the two, any side, and fold it over. Okay, and then line up those center edges right here. Get it all lined up, I'll try to get my hand out of the way, and then place it on one of the lines here, any one. Now we're gonna do a little diagonal cut. So you're gonna have your ruler right on the corner up here, and then you're gonna place it on three quarters of an inch from here over that way. So we're gonna cut out this little pie shape. See this? So it's gonna be on this corner up here and over a little bit, three quarters of an inch. Y'all understand that. Here, we're cutting out this pie shape. And then go ahead and cut that off. All right, real easy to do. Set this aside momentarily. Now take your two little strips of binding. This is the straight grain binding. And you're gonna place it on the edges of the two pieces of fabric, or two circles we've just cut out. You're gonna line it up on the straight edge here. Then you're gonna stitch in one quarter of an inch from this raw edge, come in and stitch all the way across. Then go to your ironing board and press this seam nice and flat. Now fold this over and press with your iron again, making sure that this seam here is going out and away, all right? Then turn it over onto the back. Fold this over one more time and make sure that the folded edge here comes past the stitch line right there. And then press again with your iron. Now if you've done all of this right, you don't need to pin it now. Now go to your sewing machine and you're gonna do what we call stitch in the ditch. This is the ditch right here. This is where the binding and the check fabric come together. So you're gonna stitch on the check fabric real close to the binding, all the way down. And if you've done everything correctly, let me go to the other one, you'll see that it caught the lower edge of the binding. This is the back right now. And this is what it looks like on the front. 
You want to do this on both of your half circles. Now, if you have any binding left over on the end here, just go ahead and trim all of that off, okay, so that you have these nice clean edges like this, okay? Great, now set those two pieces aside temporarily. Now take your B fabrics and your cotton batting and we're going to layer them. So here I've got my A fabric, I mean, excuse me, my B fabric on the back with the pretty side facing out. I've got it on the top and the two layers of batting are in between. Okay, so you have the pretty sides facing out on both sides. Now you're going to do some real simple top stitching. And just eyeball this. You don't do, need to do a perfect measurement. Just go through the center from one edge to the other. Then go over a couple inches, do another line, and then go over here to the other side and do the same thing. Then turn the pot holder and do repeat that. Go through the center first, then over a couple inches, and then over a couple inches. Now, don't worry if your edges look all jagged. It's all going to get covered up with the binding. So before we can do the binding, you've got to take your two half circles now and line them up on the outer edge here. Okay, so here's one of them. Take the other one and line it up on the outer edge. And now you'll see this little pie shape appearing. Good. Now if it looks like this, you're good to go to the next step. Now what I usually do is go back to the sewing machine and just do a couple of little stitches here and there. And then I'll come up here and do a couple of little stitches. And this is just to hold it in place while you're putting your binding on. Okay, so set this aside temporarily. <clears throat> now get your long strip of bias cut binding. Now remember how your final ends, after you've stitched them together, are still going to look like this. You want to cut one of those ends straight. So you're going to cut this uh, zigzag one off so that it's straight like this one here. Now you're going to cut through one layer, one half here. You're going to cut out about a quarter of an inch and leave about a quarter of an inch up here. All right, so that it looks like this. Then at your ironing board, fold this over and press. Now, I do a lot of pressing. Your project will come out so much better if you use your iron to press. Don't always finger press everything because likely it's not going to turn out as well. Okay, so once you've got that done, then you're going to take that end and place it up here where the two pieces meet up here. So you're going to fold that edge over and put it right there. Okay, can you see that Mr. Cameraman? Okay, and then begin pinning it down. So place a pin there to hold it. Now I'm going to go to my next sample. So here I've pinned it down. Here's where I started, right here. You're going to continue pinning all the way around the pot holder. Now, because you're working with bias cut binding, it'll stretch, but you don't want to stretch it. Just lay it down easy. Don't stretch. Your pins will be fairly close together. So you want to pin all the way around the entire outer circle of the pot holder. And then your last pin right here will stop right up against this edge of the other end of the binding. Does that make sense to you, I hope? Okay, that's where your last pin will go. Right here. Now you're going to stitch. You're going to come in from the raw edge in anywhere from a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch. I like three-eighths because I happen to like my binding edge a little bulkier than most people do. I think it looks nicer, but you do whatever works for you the best. So go ahead 
and stitch all the way around. Now if you're a beginner, when you're at your sewing machine stitching on a curve, you just turn it slow. All right, just turn it slow when you're working. Now you're coming around here to the end and you're gonna stop right at your last pin and do a few stitches back and forth here to tie it off. Now, take it out of your machine and make sure all your pins are out. Now you're gonna cut some of this excess binding off. So line up your edge of your pot holder on one of the lines on your cutting mat and count over four and a half inches. One, two, three, four, and a half. You're gonna cut right off at that four and a half inch mark. Alrighty, now we got one couple of more little tiny steps to do and you'll be close to being done. At that end here, okay, right here, we're gonna do a little bit of cutting again. So, you're gonna cut a one inch, about a one inch square here. You're gonna leave a quarter of an inch up here. Alrighty, so you're gonna cut this out only through one layer. See that? Alright, then at your ironing board, you want to fold this end over one quarter of an inch and press with your iron. I'm going to turn this a little bit so it's at a better angle. Sorry about that. Then fold this other raw edge over in like that and again press it with your iron and one more fold fold it in half and press okay good now comes a really easy part this next part is really easy now you're going to fold your binding over the edge so i'm going to turn it over onto the back and you're going to begin just folding it over and it will go over really really easy see that it comes over real easy now and i kind of tug on it a little bit to make sure it's all coming through really good now you're going to start pinning at this point here so fold it over now this folded edge here needs to come past where's my little pointy thing here it is come past this stitch line here i don't know if you can see it very well where you stitch the front of the binding on you're going to pull that folded edge past. If you don't pull it past, the next step after this won't work. Okay, so make sure you pull it past. And then you're going to just pin it from the back. Okay, excuse me, let me go this way. Now, you're going to continue pinning all the way around. Now, when you come around here to the end, you're going to fold it over and place a pin right there where the two pieces, the two ends of binding meet. Okay, oops, well I can't quite get it, I'm at a weird angle. There we go. Okay, so once that is down and pinned, remember you're going to pin it all the way around, I'm going to turn it over to the front. Now you're going to do stitch in the ditch again, just like we did on this part here. You're going to repeat that here. So start right here in the center. Stitch right on that checkered fabric, not on the binding. Stitch all the way around. And when you get here, you're going to pull, when you get to the end here, you're not going to stop stitching. You're going to pull this part of the binding over. Make sure it's still folded. Pull it over and Come up on top right here. Do a couple of stitches on top of the other end. Then turn your pot holder, leave your needle down, lift up the pressure foot, turn your pot holder, make sure this is still folded, and then pull it out this way and begin stitching all along this edge here. And when you get to the end, stitch right across here. And you're done with the hard part of the binding. One more little thing. Take, make sure all your pins are out for this next step. You're going to take this end of the binding, 
Remember, it's already stitched. You're just going to pull it around like this, stick it up underneath. Okay, it's underneath right now. Put a pin back there to hold it on the back. Let me get my other sample. So here it is. I've got it folded around to the back. You're going to have a pin there to hold it in place. I'm going to turn this over. Now you're just going to do one little kind of a rectangle stitch here to hold it. Just stitch across, come up a little bit of two or three stitches, come back across and go back down a few stitches to create this little rectangle. And then you are done. I know there's a lot of steps, but it's really not that difficult to do. I think you're gonna really enjoy this project. It's a very functional pot holder. Now the Sewing Room Channel offers a lot of items for your kitchen to make. Now if you want other pot holders, here's the Easy Pot Holder really easy to do no binding involved so if you're a little in intimidated by the binding start out with this one this is also a great project for children to learn how to sew here's another easy pot holder with binding and i show you how to do the mitered corners not difficult at all there's also a hanging four patch pot holder okay and then there's a pinwheel pot holder and then there's here another round pot holder, just plain. If you're interested in machine applique, look at this, isn't that pretty? Here's another machine applique. Now I don't want you to think this is all we have. There's also pot holders, look at that. And then here's another more traditional looking pot holder. And we also have kitchen towels, isn't this pretty? beautiful kitchen towel and also toaster covers look at this isn't that cute you could really decorate your kitchen really nice you can coordinate this with all uh, fabrics that work together really spruce up your kitchen now if you want to see these videos go to our our uh, home page it's called the sewing room channel enter that in the search window next to your youtube screen and we've got over 120 videos many of them dealing with your kitchen and dining areas now to keep informed on all of our future videos and we've got a lot just about every week one comes out okay you want to click on subscribe so there's a subscribe down here in the lower right hand corner there's also a round picture of my face up here in the upper left hand corner click on either one of those youtube will prompt you for your email address enter that information and the next time i have a new video youtube sends you a brief email with a big button in the center you click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video i'm cheryl i'm really glad you came to my sewing room and i'll see you all next time and happy sewing